What up gamers? I'm Jason. And I'm Julie. And today on Dice and Dragons we have something special for you. Soon you will see what is behind our logo here as I do a uh, an impression of someone, but uh, in any case, Julie's now going to take it away. She is the star of this video. So we're gonna do something a little different today, as Jason said. I am going to uh, take a little bit more center stage. Jason is gonna be- You're always center stage in my life. Oh, He's gonna be my Vanna White. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do my best, like. And what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna bring you my top 10 list of competitive games for the cooperative game lover. Uh, and the reason this is coming about is because if you've been watching the channel, you know that I do love my cooperative games. Uh, hey, hey, hey. When we started dating, the only thing she owned was competitive games. Yeah, Monopoly. Lots of versions of Monopoly. Uh, <laughs> Ticket to Ride. And a little bit more on that in a second. Uh, but basically in conversations with other, uh, other gamers, friends that I game with, with Jason, uh, it was brought to my attention that I do love quite a few competitive games. And then I started listing them off and I realized there are more than 10. Yes. Uh, so we decided to bring you the top 10, my top 10 list of best competitive games um, from the perspective of me, the cooperative board game lover. Um, so on Ticket to Ride, uh, Ticket to Ride, spoiler, is not in the top 10. I'm sorry, Mom. Uh, <laughs> we love playing that game. We've played it a lot in the family. Um, but the reason it's not on the list, um, the big, big reason it's not on the list, is it's a really long game. The more people you have, the longer it takes. And there's a lot of people that get um, analysis paralysis. Um, <laughs> and like the last time we played? Yeah. So that being said, it is a fun game. I do enjoy playing it, but it didn't make it to the top, lit, top 10. So that's, you know, an example for you. So Jason's going to remove our logo. Uh, and why is Ex Libris here? Well, uh, Ex Libris... How, I didn't even get a chance to remove the logo. The logo's still here. Come on, like... And then now remove the logo. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have Ex Libris. You gotta let me do my intro. I mean, I gotta be like, man, I like... So tell, all the, so tell everybody about Ex Libris. Yes, yeah, so this is Ex Libris by Adam... P. MacGyver, the designer, and published by Renegade Games. Now, hopefully, I will remember all the designers. They'll be visible on the box. There's a few games where that might not be quite so visible. If that does happen, I will try to, you know, show you where the name will appear somewhere on the screen. <laughs> so, Ex Libris would have been on the top 10 list. Um, yes, this is an honorable mention. It's an honorable mention because it would have been until very recently where an, another game slid it off the list um so the reason Punched it's it. it's uh on my, an honorable mention is because i worked at a bookstore for a long long time and i shelved a lot of books and i enjoyed shelving the books and it was a lot of fun and i still do it at home all my books are all alphabetized anyways that's a whole other tangent yeah we, we've got a whole conversation on the that. point being this is a great game for people who loves books uh, who love books it's a lot of fun there's a lot you can do with it but it also can take a really long time and i think i liked it a lot more until a recent experience with other players made me uh, decide that it was just too long. So it got... And was it supposed to be 45 minutes? Yeah, it's when not, they know the game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so honorable mention, lots of fun. It's a game that you, uh, especially if you like books, uh, you'd probably enjoy um, as long as, you know, the people you're playing with don't get analysis paralysis. So on that note, let's quickly go to number 10. I'm just going to slide this over here. Hopefully I get it camera yes try to make sure when hopefully this is nice and centered so we have harry potter the house cup competition that is published by the op games thanks again ross for making sure we got a chance to play this it is designed by nate heiss and cammy mandel now hopefully i said that right so uh harry potter everything harry potter i tend to like uh this is not an exception this is the only it has its own square behind us its own cubby uh, this is the only competitive Harry Potter game we have. Um, There's some others, but they're terrible. They're from night games, and they're expensive. That we have. Keep going, the op. Well, <laughs> that are, keep going. Make the good ones. So I, uh, I did enjoy this game. There's a couple of little things that make it fall to number 10 on the list. If you want more information on that, you can check out our review. I think Jason said you're going to have the links at the bottom. All of the reviews that Julie has been involved in will be included down below in the video description. If there are any games that she has played but have, has not yet reviewed that we review in the future, they will be added to the list. So bottom line, if you're playing this three players, if you think you're going to play three players... 
I really <laughs> like it. That's my favorite way to play this game. So moving to number nine. And I think uh, your mom won't be so sad that Tick to Right got the boot because we have Azul by Michael Riesling, published by Plan B and Next Move Games. So the story behind this game is that... Uh, Sorry, Keesling. Keesling. Michael Keesling. That uh, we bought this game for a friend of ours for, for, his, uh, for his birthday. Uh, and he said he really enjoyed it. Jason had heard lots of good things. Um, so when he said he loved it, we bought a copy for ourselves. She looked at me cross-eyed when I said I have a competitive game that's going to be a great family game. She's like, uh-huh. So one of, the, <laughs> one of the reasons this game, there's a couple reasons why this game is on, our, on my top 10 list. Uh, first of all, it's beautiful. Second of all, we played this game with my parents over Christmas. And funny story. Last Christmas. Last Christmas. <laughs> Funny story is that no time machines here. we played we played the game a couple of times and my parents with my parents who are not big gamers they play with us uh, my my mom likes games a little bit more than my dad uh, anyways we played this we played this game with them and my mom at one point said I have no idea what I'm doing but she proceeded to beat us three times and not by like five points by like twenty and thirty points. So as you're playing the game, you're putting together this design. And as my mother put it, uh, you're making a quilt. Uh, and she's a big quilter. And it's basically like you're not actually making a quilt. This is actually supposed to be stained glass, stained glass uh, or tiles, however you want to look at it. But it no, looks, tiles, sorry. The, the other one's stained glass. Uh, it's just very pretty. And you're making patterns. And it's a lot of fun. And one of the reasons why I like it so much, and it's uh, number nine on my list, is because... I can play this game and not win it and still enjoy playing it. And there are not a lot of games that, out there uh, like that. I will hopefully one day win this game. Uh, maybe if I'm not playing against my mom, I might have a yeah, chance of winning. Yeah, I was to say, not if your mother has anything to say about it. <laughs> but that being said, it's a lot of fun. It's very colorful. And as my parents have proven, um, you don't need to be big gamers to enjoy playing this game. All right. Next, number seven. Nope. No, eight. number eight. You get the honorable mention. So... Unearth. Uh, the story behind this game. Um, oh, hey, hey, you're still sorry. my thunder here. Yes. Unearth. Yes, it is by. Banna. Yes, it is by Brotherwise Games and designed by Chris and Johnny O'Neill. I think I got that right. Their names are hidden on the box, so I don't know. Probably in the rule book. In any case, take it away. Well, if it's Chris and Johnny, you did a great job with the design. That's one of the things that I love the most about this game. So basically, we went to a board game day where people bring games and we play a bunch of different games and uh, we showed up and this is the game that we were being played. So we played it and I just thought it was a beautiful game and the idea about having the, the crystals and how it was played. And again, this is another... Oh, it's a dice. Yeah, but there's also... It's just pretty. It's a pretty game. Yes, sir. The stones. Mean. The stones. I call them crystals. They're stones. They're pretty. It's a pretty <laughs> game. And we played it. And I think in that case, too, I lost. And I still didn't take it badly. Bottom line, we played it. And I said to Jason, can we get that game? And he looked at me and he said, it's a competitive game. You do know that, right? And I said, yes, but it's pretty. And we've played it a few times. And actually, I've never reviewed the game. But I did give my input when uh, Jason and, and Sammy G did the review. Yeah, it's been a long time we did the review together. You played with us, so. Yeah. So I really enjoy this game. I think, uh, again, if you like pretty games and you like nice table presents um, and a game that's not really uh, in your face, it's really playing more of your own game, uh, this, uh, again, is, is basically building uh, your own world. Uh, and uh, it's a lot of fun. All right. Next. We have the top game, probably, well, uh, probably won so many awards for 2019. It is Wingspan, published by Elizabeth Hargrove and, well, sorry, not published, designed by Elizabeth Hargrove and published by Stonemaier Games. I don't think Elizabeth really wants to get into publishing. Who knows? Maybe she will one day. So big thanks to Elizabeth for giving a shout out to the channel earlier on this year. We hadn't played any of your games yet and uh, we've always wanted to play Wingspan. We finally got a chance to do it and thanks a lot, Jamie Stegmeyer, for all the support you've given to the channel over the past year, letting us get some cool reviews and uh, we will have... Uh, 
the Oceania expansion coming soon. And I'll let you do the rest. Vanna, I did my has, Vanna has a lot to say today. Hey, and, hey, and thanks to Bill and Mike. A lot Mike. of nice people. Yes. And thanks to Bill yeah. and Mike for uh, allowing us to um, get this to the table. So this is the game uh, that knocked uh, Ex Libris out, basically. Uh, we played this recently. Uh, again, you'll notice a common theme for me, and I do talk about it. Games, um, games for me need have big bonus um, when they're beautiful to look at and they have great table presence. And definitely this is one of them. So I, I'm just going to give an example. There's a new cooperative game. I showed her the painted mini. She said, get the painted minis. Don't tell me the price. But that is not always the case. We did have a very high production value competitive game that came in. We've got quite a few things arriving all at once. If you're following the social media, you'll have seen it. That one didn't stay in the house very long because we just don't have the time. <laughs> so Wingspan is uh, about birds and I also love birds. I've loved birds since I think I was in fifth grade. Um, and so I love the beauty of the different birds and you know, the eggs and everything. It's just a pretty game. Um, again, uh, there is some randomness to this, but you play uh, largely your own game. Uh, and uh, it's another game that's fun to play without having to worry that people are going to be beating up on you or, or trying to sabotage you or stab you in the back. So, um, you know, if you have a little love in your heart for uh, for birds uh, and you like a pretty game... Art, the art is fantastic. Yeah, uh, I think you'll enjoy this one. All right. Next. Cool. Sneak this one back <laughs> here. This one's a little heavier because we've got everything in it. Ugh. So, Clank. Tell them about Clank. Well, Clank is by Direwolf Digital. I'm forgetting the designer's name. It'll show up probably here or here soon. And it is published by Renegade Games in this box. The reason why it took me so long to get it out. We've got just about every expansion for the game, except for uh, some of the ones that are just for, well, for Legacy. For purpose, for the intent of this, this number six ranking on my list um, is for the base version of the game. Uh, we've played all the different versions. I am not a huge fan of Clank and Space because I keep getting sabotaged and it's just not fun for me <laughs> when you're partway through and you realize there's just no way you can catch up because you've been sabotaged. So this one, uh, well, this not one so is... Not so much sabotage, but definitely... Uh... Derailed. Cut you off. Yes. <laughs> so, so this game actually um, is one of the first games that Jason asked for for his birthday when we first started dating. Uh, so, we, one of the first games probably that we we played together, and um, I I really enjoyed that actually it. Actually, is now I think about it, <laughs> it's probably one of the first. I, I know Descent is is up there as well, but Descent yeah, was the first. Yeah. In any case, this one is lots of fun. Um, it's easy again, and I, one of the common things here is it's easy to play for the non gamers. Um, and I again, I would say I prefer playing this game, and one of the reasons it's number six. Uh, and not in the top five is because it's more fun at the higher player counts to me um, than it is at the lower player counts. I have less fun playing this game, just the two of us, now that we've played so many others and why there are more in the top five and why this one made it to the top six. But if you're playing more players, I think this one is a lot of fun. Uh, I think the concept is cool and we don't really have anything else like it when it comes to... No, we don't have any games that is deck building and a board. I and competitive. This, and competitive. So yeah. uh, it definitely... And the right level of antagonism. We don't quite get to the level where it's like... Urgh. No. So it's... It, I love my deck builders. Uh, I especially love my cooperative deck builders. But this one is a lot of fun. Uh, has a special place, like I said, because it's one of the first that we started playing together. So on that note, we're going to take a little technical break so we can clear the table. And we're going to come back to you with my top five uh competitive games for the cooperative board game lover. Oh, what is it going to be? You'll see soon. So number five <laughs> appears magically by the power of technology. So yes. Jason, tell them about this Ethnos. This is Ethnos, published by Simon Games and designed by Paolo Mori. Now, it's been a little while since we played it, but I'll let you explain the story of this one. Uh, so again, this is another uh, game day. Uh, same person, I believe, hosting. Different location, but yes. yeah. Um, and again, this is, uh, uh, Bill and Mike introduced me to this again, as I, I think I mentioned in the intro, uh, they've introduced me to quite a few pretty beautiful competitive games. Uh, and you just oh, like the colored discs. 
I, I love the production <laughs> value of it. And again, this is a game where there is some comp competition for resources. Um, and you can block somebody, but again, you can largely play your own game to see who's going to come out on top with a, not too much jostling or backstabbing going on. No, I have to agree. The blocks were really only like, if I don't block you, I'm stupid. <laughs> um, so again, uh, this game made it in, in the top five because it's um, not quite as long as other games. It can be long. There can be some analysis That's paralysis. It's, 45 to 60 minutes. Uh, but uh, again, this is a game that I have fun playing. Uh, I have fun even though I don't win. Uh, which is hard for me to say. I, I am very competitive, and it's probably one of the reasons why I like to focus on cooperative games, um, because I like to channel my uh, competitiveness with other people to a common goal, especially when I'm playing with my husband, so that I'm not, you know, trying to beat him. The Death Star incident of 2017. Yeah, you can let that one go. <laughs> so, uh, Ethnos is just a lot of fun. You're conquering, uh, you know, it's, it's just right up my alley uh that way i don't know what else i should say about it except to say again this is oh well, you the art you like the fantasy well right? i was gonna say this is the fantasy the art is pretty it's a nice table presence um i would say if you have played monopoly in your past and enjoyed it uh this kind of feels like a many many times better version of Monopoly. No, there's not really any rules in Move, but I get I get what you're saying with the acquiring of cards yeah. to score points. So yeah. that sort of thing. Uh, so lots of fun. Again, uh, something to consider um, if you're uh, if you're looking at uh, looking for another uh, competitive game. All right. So let's go to number four. So Jason so, is very happy that this is in my top five. I was very surprised, and I have to say, this game was surprising when we got it. It is Cowboy Bebop Space Serenade by Japanime Games and Don't Panic Games. It's, I'm trying to get the names of the designers. It's Florian Syriax and Johan Benvenuto. Sorry, I have to cheat on the side. I The last name was just slipping my mind. So, Take it away. Jason says, happy wife, happy life. Well, sometimes, you know, you want to make, I want to make Jason happy as well, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, and Jason loves Cowboy Bebop. Um, and when this, when this came uh, to the table, I said, okay, let's, let's try it. So it is a deck building game, which is one of the reasons why uh, I like it. It is competitive, but it, it definitely, uh, again, you're competing basically for resources. Um, yeah, there's a semi-co-op nature. You will all lose together, but only one person can win. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's really one of the reasons why it's I like it so much. And Jason was very surprised that, uh, you know, when we we're doing the review of this, I said, no, let's play it again. Uh, <laughs> and and often competitive games will we'll get, you know, three or four plays and I'll say, okay, we've, we've played it, review it. Let's move on. This one we've played and we've brought it back to the table since we've reviewed it. Um, uh, so that just, you know, speaks to the fact that I really did enjoy playing it. It, um, in this case, it's not table presence, uh, at all. I mean, I, I know Jason really likes the look of it. And if you're a Cowboy Bebop fan, you'll, you'll like the look yeah. of it as Dual well. Dual boards, miniatures. But it has, you know, if you, if you watch m reviews that, and my comments, it has, it's a deck builder. It has minis. Um, and as it has a little bit of, of like, Jason, as Jason said, a little bit of, um, cooperative nature to it. Cause you do have to work together a little bit. Yeah, I gotta make sure you don't lose. And, and, and the, bag I get the other thing that I like about this game is that you, you have special, each of your characters have special powers. So it has, it brings in the things that I like about a lot of cooperative games. Uh, even though it has a little bit of, well, it definitely has, there's only one winner. It has a competitive nature to it. So, uh, surprisingly for surprisingly for me, um, this one is, is definitely up there on my, on my favorites. And, uh, I think that it's something to look at and consider if you like, uh, cooperative games, if you like cooperative games, you might enjoy this competitive game. Okay. I wasn't sure. You aren't sure where it's going? You're not on the sure. same page? No, so we have Spirits of the Forest by Natalie Dambois and Michael Sack. So it's been a while with this one, but uh, glad the new Kickstarter campaign is done and we'll be getting some more content for this. So I'm going to be very honest. This one is number three based a lot on the version that we have. Um, 
I think if we had a different version, it may not be so high on the list. It probably would still be in the top ten. It would probably yes, it would still be in the well, top we've ten. We've got so keep talking about the game. I'll show people why. It is an absolutely beautiful game. I like getting it to the table because I like best fan now. I like seeing it. Uh, and you'll not notice again a little bit like Wingspan. It's nature, um, and it has it's really pretty. Uh, like Wingspan, Wingspan, it has these uh, cute little. I can't even get them out. Uh, these cute little egg type, uh, colorful little tokens. It has wood pieces. Yeah, I think that's the. Uh, that's I the I basically the wooden tiles. love looking at this game, so I enjoy playing the game. Uh, it has excellent table presence. I just love playing it, and I love the way it plays. Um, because again, you're playing your game, um, and it's basically, you know. It's a little, with a little bit of luck, it's the you know the person who plays the best game that basically is going to win the game, um, and um, it takes a little bit of strategy, uh, which I like as well. Um, so it's not just just based on on luck. So it is an absolutely beautiful game, and I would say with Christmas coming, uh, if you know somebody who loves nature things and could appreciate beautiful games. Uh, this is definitely one that that is lots of fun. If I remember, I know as Jason said, it's been a while. If I remember correctly, I love this best at three or four players, but I will definitely still play it with Jason. It's a good two-player game, not two heads up. And the deluxe edition, I don't know where you can get it. The gameplay does not change. If you go to the lower version, it is also significantly cheaper so i really like the fact that uh, eagle griffin games i forgot to mention them earlier getting them now they produce two versions that you can get and uh highly portable if you get the uh non-deluxe version but you saw why she talks about the presence it's probably the most beautiful game in terms of pure production in our collection or close to it yep so definitely a game uh that's uh, high on my list all right we're going a lot Smaller. Number two. So, my friends, if any of our friends are watching the channel, we have brought this game a lot of places. It is, as you can see, highly portable. It is one of the reasons it's number two. The other reason is it is super, super quick to play. Uh, it really doesn't take very long. Uh, and it also doesn't take itself too seriously. Uh, we can play this multiple times. Uh, you can. Are you a priest? <sighs> <laughs> That's an inside joke for me. Uh, so basically anybody can play this. Uh, it's really easy to teach. If you play card games, you can play a uh, love letter. Uh, we've played it on a small uh, plastic table sitting by a lake, uh, drinking a beer. Um, we've played it uh, lots of different places. It, it is really, um, it's a lot of fun. And it just has a place, a special place in my heart because we've played it with pretty much everybody. And how many times we get cross-eyed looks? We're playing Love Letter, and, and then, then everyone's like, again, yeah. again. <laughs> so it's lots of fun. Uh, and like I said, it's not a game that takes itself seriously. And it is just uh, an easy game to play with pretty much anybody. So for me, that makes it one of uh, the best competitive games, which is why it's number two on the list. All right. So you get to your number one pick. Do you want to do a drum roll? <laughs> For the second time on Julie's list, we have a Brotherwise game production. This is Call to Adventure, and this one for sure I know is designed by Chris and Johnny O'Neill. So, this game is one that has come back to the table many, many, many times. And it's a competitive game that uh, we've tried the competitive, the cooperative mode, right? Yes. And I said, yeah. I actually prefer the competitive mode. Yes. There is the new version that has a better cooperative mode, but we're not talking about that. No. She's talking about this. <laughs> so this is just a lot of fun. Yes, there's a lot of randomness to this game. Um, there's a lot of stuff that can come up, but you can play, uh, again, your own game, and you pick, your, you, you pick what you want to do. You have different choices. We've played this game as well with many different people of different level of gaming and um it's a little bit more strategy there's you know sometimes it takes people uh, a time or two to get the hang of playing this game um but it is just a lot of fun but 
for me, probably the reason why it's number one on my list is this is a game that Jason and I can play together and not get in a fight. <laughs> it because really the game that you're playing is just a lot of fun building that story. Uh, and telling the story at the end. For me, the telling of the story isn't really even that. I mean, I know there are other people that really enjoy that part the most. Have a great story, but continue. It's not <laughs> your video. It's mine. I know, but it's still fun. Uh, I'm sulking now. <laughs> so it's just a lot of fun to build that, build up that that story, uh, and try to get those uh, those additional points. But really, at the end of it. Um, you can still have fun playing the game, even if you're not winning the game. Uh, you're just counting your points at the end. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I think this we've played this game probably over 20 times. Collectively and throughout all the different times, yeah, it's definitely over 20. Uh, so for me, that makes it the best, best competitive game for a cooperative board game lover. All right. So you saw Julie's list in full detail one last time. Now I'm going to toss it back over to her and she's going to take it away. I remind you to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified when we have some new content like this, which is new and different. So especially in this case, I'd like to ask you to comment and let us know what you thought of the content. Did you like it? Would you like to see more? Do you have a special request for Jason for a top five, a top 10 of his choosing? Something for both of us. Yep. Uh, and especially in this case, I'd like to know if you are like me, a you prefer cooperative games. What do you think of my list of my best competitive games or my favorite competitive games. Do you agree? Would you have listed them differently? We want to bring some new, more discussion-like topics to the channel. We are planning one in the near future. Not sure when it will come out. Probably be uh, why we like cooperative games because that's mostly what we review on the channel. And I do need to remind you that down below in the video description, you can find links to all of our social media feeds, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. So you can definitely leave some comments there as well. You'll see plenty of pictures of Julie and I playing a lot of the games on the list. Not all of them are there, unfortunately, because we didn't have our feeds running at that time. So comment here on the YouTube video, comment over there, let us know what you thought of this video. And the more you let us know, the better content that we can provide for you, our viewers. We love all you guys. And ladies, ladies, yep. ladies. And as you had mentioned, right, there's going to be the links to the reviews of the games that we are in the top 10 that we did review, right? Yes. All the ones that Julie and I did review together. If Julie has not reviewed it, well, that's another comment you can leave. Ask for that review video and you may get it sooner rather than later. And then popping up in front of me, you're going to see, well, in front of us, links to our most recently released video. That'll be the link that goes over here. We'll have an oldie, but a goodie over here, I think. It's Julie's list. She gets to decide what the featured game is. So what is it? Well, I think we should go with the number one game, right? All right, so it'll be Call to Adventure, a review on how to play from Brother Wise Games. Well, they didn't sponsor it, but they did publish the game. And with that being said, what time is it? Well, what do we have to say anyway? We're gonna say, keep, keep playing, playing games. games.